In today's video, we're discussing some very interesting NHL trade rumors concerning the Toronto Maple Leafs and their potential plans to acquire a backup goaltender and a right shot defenseman ahead of the NHL trade deadline. And it appears as though we might be heading for a bit of an arms race between the Penguins, Blues, and Bruins. We'll just jump into all the latest news coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have some very interesting information to discuss today about some potential plans for some of these teams heading into the NHL trade deadline. And we're going to kick things off here with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, there's been a lot of talk all season long about the backup goaltending situation and their need to make an upgrade. Now, they've made a, a real solid effort lately to get more playing time from Michael Hutchison. Uh, they need to really see what they have there. And even though I think it's fair to say he did play better recently than he did early on, uh, I still think there's a potential they might look to make an upgrade and there's been a major link between the Maple Leafs and the New York Rangers since the goaltenders have a bit of a interesting goaltender situation and there's a lot of talk they might move goaltender Alexander Georgiev now Georgiev has been a pretty decent backup has somewhat limited NHL experience uh, but still has a lot of potential and has played relatively well considering all things where the Rangers team has been at as they're going through a bit of a rebuild as well of course the Rangers also have longtime veteran goalie Henrik Lundqvist and they also have youngster Igor Turkin, who appears to be the heir apparent to Lundqvist and the potential future starter for this team moving forward. They made an interesting move calling him up from the American Hockey League. Uh, recently, even though Lundqvist and Georgiev both were healthy and able to play and are now carrying three goalies at the NHL level, which is somewhat unheard of, especially for a team uh, in their situation. So uh, clearly it's been rumored that Georgiev could be on the move trigger that the Rangers are certainly willing to entertain offers on Georgiev. They're not completely sold on moving him, but they're willing to listen and he would be the guy to go amongst the three goaltenders should they decide to make a trade. Well, obviously there's been lots of talk about the Leafs being interested in what it might take to acquire this backup goaltender from New York. Now, originally uh, there was a lot of NHL insiders, including Dreger and others, indicating that the Leafs could trade prospect forward Jeremy Bracco, as well as potential pick in a package to make an upgrade in that backup goaltending situation. Bracco is a player who appears to be NHL ready, has really put in his time in the American Hockey League. Looks like he's a you know has a lot of potential. Uh, certainly put in his time, uh, and but it's kind of boxed out of an NHL opportunity due to the depth that the Leafs have at the NHL level with their forward group. Uh, so he might have to move on to get more of an opportunity. So if you take Bracco, package him either with another prospect, maybe a second, third round pick, something to that effect. A lot of people thought that would be enough to acquire you know a decent NHL backup goaltender. But there's now reports that are New York uh, indicating that that's not going to be enough. And we even seen on Twitter uh, yesterday from Darren Dreger in indicating that even throwing in a forward a uh, higher level like a Kasperi Kapanen might not be enough to acquire Georgiev out of New York. So clearly that's a steep price to pay for a backup goaltender. Yes, he's got a lot of potential, but I'm not really sure I'd go down that road here just yet for somebody who's not quite as established as you would like to give up a player of that magnitude. Now we've discussed the possibility the Leafs may be moving a forward uh, like a Kapanen, Janssen, uh, any of those guys, but you know what? I'm not really sure I'd make that type of move for an unproven backup goaltender. No offense to Georgiev. I think he has a lot of potential, but it just seems like a steep price if you ask me. So I guess we'll see if that dialogue continues between those two teams. Uh, I would think over time, the price tag very well might come down for the Rangers. They're aiming high right now. Uh, they're making it known to teams that they clearly want a solid return, which certainly I understand from their perspective, but it quite often happens that the price tag is set pretty high. And after teams not biting that over time, the price tag will come down and we'll see what happens there. But there's also been a lot of links to the Leafs signing another top Russian goalie prospect out of the KHL uh, with this potential offseason. Uh, so clearly, uh, you know, they seem to be uh, in a bit of a crossroads with their backup goaltending situation, but uh, where they can actually sign a really solid Russian prospect goalie in the offseason without giving up any assets, I'd be careful to give up a young forward like a Kapanen or a Janssen or something to that effect. Uh, plus, according to Dreger, it's not going to be all it takes to get him. So personally, if I'm the Leafs, I back off of those conversations unless the price comes down. I would not be making a move. But sticking with the Leafs, there's been some new information from the fourthperiod.com and the latest article from Dave Pagnota uh, discussing other moves that they might be looking to make to address their defense situation. Morgan Riley being out for a significant period of time. Now, the fact that Riley's not going to be out for the remainder of the season 
The fact that the Leafs will get Riley back before the end of the regular season also kind of imposes some issues with the salary cap because they can't use LTIR on him for the full season here. So if they can't go out and acquire another big name without money going out because they'll need to reactivate Riley's contract before the season ends here. Uh, So clearly that's a bit of an issue. It'd almost be better from a cap perspective at least if he were out for the season. But at the same time, I'm sure they're going to want him back before the playoffs. Uh, Certainly from a team perspective, it's better to have him on the ice Clearly, but there's been more talk from Dave Pagnoni here that they might be willing to move a few other contracts. And some of the guys have been mentioned in a potential swap for a backup goaltender very well likely could be used in exchange for a right shot defenseman. For example, the guys that I mentioned here in the Georgiev rumor like Kapanen and Janssen. And it's also been mentioned here by Pagnoni about Cody Ceci's contract where he's earning $4.5 million. We've seen some other guys uh, on the team play a little bit better like Hall and Marinson which very well could make Cody Ceci somewhat expendable, especially if it's going to bring in, you know, a fairly top defenseman who could really help them down the playoff stretch and potentially be on the current even NHL season here. And he mentions that their prime target on defense that they're looking for is Minnesota Wild defenseman Matt Dumba. So the Wild are in a situation that they're likely going to be going through a bit of a rebuild or a reset here. Of course, new GM Bill Guerin's got some challenges, obviously, with the situation in Minnesota. There's a lot of big-time contracts that are going to be difficult to move that he can't really get away from. From, uh, which is kind of make things difficult to go through a, a full and proper rebuild here in short order. But uh, clearly the Wild are likely not making the playoffs this year, likely would be sellers and likely doing a bit of a reset heading into next year. If you look at the fact that we've got long-term deals for like Ryan Suter, Jarrett Spurgeon, some other guys on the way up here. So perhaps it might uh, make sense from a perspective of uh, bringing in some good assets to help them in other aspects of the team. It's been known for some time that Garen really wants to add a top six forward, ideally somebody who's a little bit on the younger side of things. So the Leafs certainly do have that. If you throw in a player like Casper or Kapanen, maybe a Cody Ceci, uh, that very well could be potentially enough to land a Dumba. You might even have to throw in a pick of some kind. But uh, Dumba on the Leafs with a guy like Riley and Barry already at the forefront here would really make their blue line pretty lethal, especially from an offensive standpoint. And very well could, even though on a short-term basis, really help them in a playoff run. Uh, but if Dumba is acquired, I would think that would all but seal the fate that Tyson Barry wouldn't be uh, re-signed and retained beyond the current season but he can certainly be a similar type of defenseman and he's signed on a longer term probably a little bit more reasonable contract as well uh, based on what Barry could be seeking on a new contract uh, considering how salaries have increased here a bit since Dumba inked his deal with the Minnesota Wild. So I guess if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs and you had the option to trade one of your good young forwards like a Casper and Kapanen, you put in maybe a Cody CC and maybe another piece. I'm not sure what that other piece would be. It might have to be a second round pick. might have to be Jeremy Bracco. Would you make that deal to lend Matt Dumba from the Minnesota Wild and even though it likely boxes out Barry from re-signing, do you think that's a good move longer term? Now, it's also mentioned here in this article that there seems to be a bit of an arms race heating up here between the Bruins, the Penguins, and the St. Louis Blues. They're all poised to make significant playoff runs and all likely looking to add similar type of players ahead of the NHL trade deadline. Now, we saw some moves to the NHL waiver wire here, which were a little bit surprising, but in a way, yes, in a way, not. The Boston Bruins placed longtime forward David Backus on waivers. Uh, as I record this video, it's not quite noon Eastern time on Saturday, so we don't know if he's cleared, but I think it's pretty safe to say that he will, which means he'll be assigned to the minors and give the Bruins a bit of a cap relief uh, just shy of $1.1 million. So that certainly will help give them a little bit more flexibility heading into the deadline. The Bruins have been showing a lot of interest in similar type of players as the guys like the Penguins and the Blues. Obviously, Toffoli and Kreider are at the forefront here of top wingers who can score and likely provide that potential rental player to these teams heading into the trade deadline. Penguins have done extremely well battling through all their injuries. They've got Sidney Crosby back now and are poised to make another playoff run here. Considering how well they've played with all the injuries they have, if they can add another top player into the mix here heading into the playoffs, I do think the Penguins are going to be a lot more dangerous and much more of a threat in the playoffs than many of us might have predicted heading into the current season. In the defending Stanley Cup champion, St. Louis Blues as well. And adding another four like a Defoli or Kreider certainly makes a lot of sense for them as well, especially with Vladimir Tarasenko being out. They have a little bit more flexibility with long-term injury reserve to make an acquisition that way. So clearly the Blues also have a lot of prospects in the mix who could be used as trade bait along with the Bruins as well. Now the Penguins might have to make a little bit more of a hockey trade here. Not really sure they have a lot of uh, draft picks and prospects in the mix that might be real appealing to other teams. So for them to add a top six forward, they likely will have to pull something off of their existing NHL rosters. 
So all these teams are in slightly different situations with what they're likely prepared to give up to make the acquisition, but they're all kind of looking for the same type of players to Foley and Kreider at the forefront for all three. And with some of these corresponding moves today, you can be sure that all these recent moves here that they've made in the last day or two are certainly in conjunction with creating more cap space, giving them more flexibility to make a bigger acquisition at the NHL trade deadline. So amongst the three teams discussed here between the Bruins, the Blues, and the Penguins, which ones do you think would be the best fit here for guys like Toffoli and Chris Kreider? Or do you see those players going elsewhere? There could be other players out in the mix as well, but they certainly lead the list of NHL trade targets heading into the NHL trade deadline. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and we'll continue the conversation. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And check out our membership features as well. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I will catch you next time.